Okay, it's almost been a year since I made my first video. I think it was in April I did it. Anyway, my uh, um, first line master, if you've been watching this, is finished. Painted and uh, sitting on a shelf in my office. Um, hopefully not getting too dusty. Uh, I'm going to put up a picture of it right now so you can see what it looks like. There it is. Anyhow, um, there was some stuff that I did not cover in the videos I discovered. Um, one of them was the uh, bulkheads that sit in here uh, need to be installed correctly. Now again, when I first started this project, I had no plans of doing an interior. I was just going to have black windows because they're so small and call it done. And then as I was going along, I, uh, I kind of went, ah, I'll make clear windows, which made me do the entire interior thing. Anyway, um, so as of this video, I think there's four or five kits out there that uh, people have wanted to uh, tackle. And I am starting another build right now for a client. I don't usually do that, but um, I was kind of strong-armed into doing it. I don't mind, though. Um, but let's me cover uh, some of the updates that I've done to the kit. Not really updates, but things I didn't cover originally around. In the kits, there are these little guys right here, and these are jigs for molding um, the interior of this nice and flat so it looks, looks nice. But what has to happen is this has to get ground out to an eighth of an inch. So this will fit over the edge because the guide that we're using is this edge right here. On um, this right here. These ports right here are to let Bondo, you're going to have to do this with um, a polyester based um, hardening, polyester or epoxy based hardening uh, filler, putty, whatever you want to call it. I'm using Bondo because it's uh, readily available and um, I don't have any magic sculpt on me which is a little less fume generating anyway I'm in my shop so I have ventilation in here and it's not an issue um, okay I'm babbling along now the uh, there's a left and right on this the uh, parts are casted up with a back flat so the parts that don't have the tiny little air bubbles on them will be the faces and these will get bolted with a three millimeter bolt. You're gonna have to open up all these holes also. The uh, holes are uh, uh, drilled through. I drilled, did it on a drill press. If you have a drill block, that's good, or just, just try to drill very, very straight. Um, anyway, I just nut these onto the back of this. Easier said than done with my big old sausage fingers here. You do this with a 440 bolt also. I'm just using three millimeter because I have three millimeter in my shop here. Anyway, uh, two bolts go in there like that with nuts on the back of them. And these aren't glued in place or anything. These are just holding it against the jig. So when we put it in here, it's all held in alignment. And we're gonna glue this in here first with five minute epoxy. And then we're gonna come back and then putty it up and then do the, um, do the, uh, uh, all the pretty side work. Uh, big thing to remember is to release this with uh, wax. Um, I use uh, mold, mold release wax, but you can use um, chapstick. Chapstick actually works very well for, for uh, as a mold release in these tiny little situations. Any sort of uh, release like that. You're going to have to clean it off with alcohol before you paint it, but that's that's the way. That's how I did the, the other build. You know, if you watch those videos, uh, pat yourself on the back because they are tedious. Anyway, so I'm going to grind this side down first. I'm going to do one side at a time. It's... Uh, it's worth just taking it slow. Um, I'm going to go around this with a pencil and mark it as an eighth of an inch. 
It's always a good idea to turn the camera on when you want to record something. Anyway, I'm just going to make a mark eighth of an inch around here. You're going to have to cut back in here a little bit more um, because of the way this steps in. And it's pretty deep in there to clear the chair so the front actually fits in there. Um, what else on here that I should point out? Um, oh yeah, just watch your um, watch your widths when you're gluing these parts up. Make sure you have the canopy on, just pinned in place, and the midsection so you know you're not getting it out of alignment or like this part's too narrow for the for the front. Um, see, I have I have the pins in this one right here, so I know that I'm lined up really nice and level with all the corners. There's going to be some fidgety anomalies when you're gluing it up. Um, just the nature of a resin kit and the flexiness of the front end of this thing. Um, but again, I cannot emphasize enough that you need to make sure you have the parts in there so you know that all your parts line up really nice. Um, this is my second belt. I'm using some uh, what I call seconds on this that had some like pretty extreme air bubbles on some areas. And I just went, ah, I'll just use that. I'm molding these parts in uh, in a gray urethane now. It's like gray. Uh, having some weird. It's not really affecting the physical properties. It's just I'm getting a marbling look to it, and it doesn't show through on the paint jobs or anything. So I guess there's not not much to worry about. I just don't like the fact that when I pigment something, that it doesn't uh, doesn't stay solid. Although I am getting some better better luck with some smooth on castings, I'm in my second set of castings now. I have uh, have uh, four more kits made. It is tedious making these things. So anyway, uh, the price point shows that. Okay, uh, on with this. I'm going to wax up my parts here. And I'm going to do that on the back of this so I don't grease up my a little workbench here. Now you're only waxing these parts because they're the ones that you want to make sure get released from the build. And then I'm just using uh, just a mold release wax that I have. But uh, in a pinch you could use a chapstick. Uh, I have. And just make sure you get all the corners and the inside of these holes. Because if um, the bondo gets in there and will want to bind to that bondo epoxy whatever I'm doing it even before I'm gluing in with the uh, with the epoxy just the uh, the bulkheads one and you want to have a film on here you don't want to have gobs of uh, gobs of wax on here just wanted to make sure that you got a barrier coat on here. All right. Okay. I have wax in my hands. I hate that feel. Okay. So those are gonna sit up it over to the side and now I'm going to grind out going to grind out the left side of this so this guy fits in there so I'm just gonna do that real quick it's gonna get loud I'll turn down the volume just gonna use a uh, cutter like this I'm going to put on a hearing protection because I hate my ears ringing at the end of the day.
my piece here. But I want to make sure that I have my depth right. These just are finger tight. Although I work with guys with finger tight, I have to use a wrench to get the nuts off. Holy crap. Anyway, this should seat. That needs to be flat with this. And uh, also make sure you do this after your assembly because you've noticed I've had to shave off my alignment pin holes. So you want to do it after you get these things set. So you can see on the, um, the top I'm okay, but I got to take a little bit more of this fender and you got to be really careful because you can go through this wall before you know it. So just be aware. Just work slow and careful and constantly fit everything. Almost there. You know what? I'm going to champ for the back of this guy. That's a bit safer to get it to sit down. Okay, good. We're we're flat all the way around. We got a good contact here. I apologize. It's been a while since I made a video, so I keep forgetting to look at the screen. Got a good flat contact here and a flat contact here. Also, um, uh, this is pretty flat. Uh, this this is a surface. This is how it comes out of the mold. So you shouldn't have to um, surface sand that at all, but it's always a good idea to make sure it's it's pretty damn flat. So I'm just checking it with this. I was like, yeah, there you go. Um, I need a better dust collection system in here. All right, so I know that that's flat. So what I want to do is lay a bead of glue. Ah, you can see in here. There it is. I'm gonna lay a bead of glue on the back side here. If it drips to the front, I'm okay with that because the, um, the mold is released. I'm gonna let that set up because after that glue sets up, hand in there again, there it is. Once that glue sets up in there, the bulkhead will be in, but then we have to address the messiness of the sides. And that's what the, uh, the Bondo filler is going to do. It's gonna give us a nice clean edge represented by this uh, piece right here, this little molding jig. Old, all these little old model building tricks that I developed over my last, what, 50 years of building models. Oh, uh, here's another thing. Uh, make sure that the This, again, this this edge right here is your key. That has to sit just so it's pretty pretty close on that edge, but it's not like you don't have a huge gap over here because that means the part's not going to be lined up right. You want it at least squared up on the top and the side right here, and that'll put the bulkhead right where it's supposed to be. Even though the uh, real Landmaster did not have those bulkheads in there, that was a... Uh, interior prop piece. The real Landmaster is quite uh, 
quite barren on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to mix up some epoxy right now. Yeah, in this in this build, you know, you only, you can only see this uh, bulkhead from the front, so I don't care about gooping some uh, extra glue behind it. I'm just using some five minute epoxy. You know what I didn't do? I didn't rough up the back side of this thing. It's always a good idea to have a little bit of a rough surface for your glue. It gives the uh, glue something to bite onto. Because with resin models, unlike styrene models, you're not melting the plastic together. You're, the adhesive is what's holding it together. That and mechanical fasteners. So I'm just going to put a couple dabs here. Just make a new modeling channel. I keep on thinking about it, the ham-fisted modeler, because I am not neat. Now that's just those little dabs of glue are there just to bridge to make sure I have uh, glue in some areas. And now I don't know if I can do this on the camera, but I'm going to try. I'm just going to go in there and I'm just going to splooge the glue in there. If those nuts get glued in place, so be it. I mean, you can heat them up, pull them out, or you can leave them in. Doesn't matter. Again, doing this, it's more important that uh, this part never falls out and rattles around on the inside of the cabin. It's about all I could see on from here. Go through the front and try to put a little bit of glue behind it here. This part will also get uh, some Bondo filled in there. Just put a step in there. It looked better behind the chair. The chairs go into here quite a ways. Um, so another thing to watch out for. I, I should have made this video a lot sooner. I don't know if anybody started building yet or they just um, bought the kits and are contemplating the build. I hate to think that I might have steered somebody in the wrong direction on the build. Okay, we're gonna let that set up. Just I, obviously, I constantly look to see what might move. While we're waiting for that to dry, I wanted to show you something else. On the molds, um, it's a hydrometer uh, silicone molds that I use. Little parts start tearing out after after runs get made. See that little? Let's see if I can zoom in here. Can you see that little blob of plastic? That's because the corner of that mold tore out um, during the mold release. 
that's not a huge issue on this part. Um, I know that there's other parts that have this, but again, there's no like, you know, time to run new molds situation. This right here, you're going to have to grind it away. Um, the uh, vent insert goes in there and that has a blend edge here that has to get uh, seamed over because the part sits in there. Uh, the only part that has to remain clean is this uh, this top edge right here. So just something to be aware of that you're going to have to go in there with a, uh, um, a Dremel tool with a very tiny or a tiny drill bit and just work on that area and clear it out. If I had my tiny dental drill bits down here, I'd uh, show you how I do it. Matter of fact, I will show you how I do it. While this glue is setting up. So I'm going to go get my other drill. And we're going to do that. Okay. Where I, we were last time. <laughs> I don't know, I stepped away and it, now it's like 24 hours later. Um, looking at this. I think I was going to show how I take that stuff out. I use a Dremel tool with a very tiny, um, tiny, uh, what do you call it, dental bit. Um, I even use a smaller one sometimes. They uh, come in handy. And they're not that expensive. They're actually kind of cheap. Um, but, uh, yeah. And grinding this stuff, they last forever. I'm going to turn on my vacuum here. So that's pretty much it. It's just you just clean up that corner a little bit. Again, the other part like sits about a sixteenth of an inch in on here, and that gets puttied over, so you don't even see this edge. The only edge you have really have to concern yourself is this one right here, and not going too crazy of uh, popping those out. But it, it's it's a really quick fix. But it's definitely not worth making new molds because uh, those are really expensive. Anyway, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And get back to this. We're going to take this apart now. And of course I don't have uh, my wrenches out. Because sometimes the glue likes to hang on to the screws. So I need to grab a 2.5 millimeter wrench. And pop these screws out here. My camera is doing something weird. Now I can see the monitor. I'm trying to do this and work in the monitor, which is kind of bizarre. And this will have the bulkhead now placed in the right spot. It's all locked in there nice and nice and neat. It's parallel. 
it's right where it needs to be. Now we're going to go in here with Bondo and clean up this entire edge by using this as a negative mold. And we'll just put, put it back in and we'll screw it back on. I think my nuts got glued into place. Yes, they did. Well, just gonna have to get some new nuts. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna clean up this top edge right here. Um, most likely I'll put a piece of uh, um, styrene stock. If you look up into the window this way, you might see the top of it. So I'll just put a, some styrene on there and make that look pretty. Um, but here's the prototype of the uh, of the cockpit area. And if you could see right here, you see how the seats, the reason why these aren't flush with the front, the seats sit back that far. So that's why those bulkheads have to be I don't know if we can actually get in there and see this. See where that, well, the seat almost touches that back there. Anyhow, so that's why those are back set that far. It, it gives us about a sixteenth of an inch away from the back of the seats. Ah, hmm. oh, uh, what do I do with that? On the kits that I sent out, I put, uh, there's a little in the laser cut sheet, you'll see a lens for the headlights where my initial build just had a silver, silver uh, painted and then I just put the, there's a flat plexiglass lens that goes over this, but I uh, cut square inserts for this and I think I might even do LED lights on this version but I'm not sure. I'm gonna find it because I just put it on my desk but it's really tiny and I gotta find it. Found it. And it sits right in there like that. It'd probably look pretty cool if uh let's see if I can zoom in on this thing. If I did backlight it a little bit, will this focus? Oh crap, I just lost my glasses. Now I can't focus. No, it won't focus that far away. There you go. Now you can see. Anyway, it's just a uh, this little, it's on the window sheet of the laser cut. But that back in there with a the lens over it will really set this thing off. So put that over here where I'll lose it later. Now we'll get back into doing this. Um, just for expediency, I'm just going to work on this this half, and then just go to the other side half off camera. Uh, our part is already waxed up, or a little molding that's already waxed up. Making sure that there's no debris on that. Oh boy. I shouldn't have done that. And that's why it's good to wear a dust mask. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is going to uh, mix up some Bondo. Just a polyester base resin. Again, if you need to, you can use uh, Magic Sculpt. You just kind of push it in there. Obviously, the viscosity is a lot thicker. I am going to be using a uh, a slightly better version of Bondo, which is for uh, um, it's like a hardened uh, glaze putty, spot putty, but it, it's, a, it's a two part thing. Let me bring that stuff down here, and then I'll mix it up. Okay, widen out the camera. I'm not going to need much. I like that. Again, this is ventilation's a must. I'm using this stuff because it stinks to high heaven. It doesn't stink after it's set, but it stinks now.
Well, it's winter time too. It's about 50 degrees outside. A lot warmer than anywhere else in the country. But uh, at least in, in the summertime, you get like a minute to work with this stuff before it sets off. It's usually too hot to work in here. Now it's actually comfortable in my garage. Worth the wise, never apply with your mixing stick because it, it'll always have unmixed uh, stuff on it. Now I'm going to let this gel with the little mold thing on it, but I will not let it harden fully because I want to uh, come back and trim off the excess. This area is going to have to be built back up either with a flat stock or bondo or whatever to make it look neat. You can see down in there into this corner through the windshield. I noticed that because I had a part on mine that was unpainted and I had to go through the door to paint it, which was very interesting. All right, just to make sure I have a nice film. I'm going to go put some on this too, like this. Not on the face, just on this edge here. So as I push it down, it'll get drawn up into the exit holes that we drilled. So I'm putting that on, like so. You kind of feel the hydraulic pressure. And now I'm going to just put some screws in here. because the nuts have been glued to the back side of this. Easier said than done. There it goes. Sorry if you can't see this, I'm kind of working. By leaving those nuts on the back of that, I could squish this real tight. At this point, if you have uh, some extra putty that hasn't set up, like I have here, I'm actually going to rebuild this area right here. I think you got to dodge a corner, if I remember correctly, to clear the seats. So we'll find that out after, after this sets up. I'm just putting some excess right there, and I can just drag a razor blade across that and make it flat. Well, while we're waiting, um, you can see where I kind of ground away. I like to grind a little groove for the putty to sit in on the seams of these things, just to give myself another nice blend edge, even though everything lines up pretty nice. But you can see where I missed with the grinder and uh, caused some extra damage. Obviously, I get a little bit too ham-fisted when I do it. But once it's primed, you can't see. I should actually go a little slower. That way I don't have so much cleanup work to do. But sometimes I have uh, more putty than time. So yeah, I get nice and hard now. So see how nice that will be when it, you just gotta get it at that sweet spot. So that's why it's important just to do one side at a time. Because this now is really firmed up at the crumbly, that's crumbly point. So now we're going to pull the uh, screws out. And 
I'm just going to try to crack this loose and slide it off without damaging anything. There we go. So this edge right here is a nice clean edge. Looks like we have an air bubble, but that's fixable. I don't want to alter the flat of this thing. So I'm coming in here and doing that. Now this this part right here is the uh, it just has a film of the material on there, and I'm just going to make it cut around the edge here so it, I could just go underneath this with a knife and just peel it up we don't need that there that's just extra flashing I'm not digging into the plastic I'm just rubbing it you could do this with a wooden stick instead of a knife too, because that will that'll take it off. Just using the knife because it has an edge on it. So, but if you can see now, obviously I have a little bit of a blemish right here, but I could just go ahead there and fill that in there and just hand model that into position. Again, this transition right here, I'm just going to grind this so it's nice flat and I'll just put a, a piece of uh, styrene there just to bridge the gap. Clean up the interior of these windows a little bit. And also we'll be coming back and filling these holes with just normal spot putty to make that look nice. And that's how you uh, how you do this. I thought I had extra material in there. I'm not sure why it, I didn't get it. Yeah, it's right where the I didn't see it spooge through that hole right there. So, uh, I really apologize for that terminology. But uh, if you have to do this again, I would suggest making sure that you clean the Bondo out before it totally sets up, because that's going to be a pain to remove. So. But there you go. That's, uh, that's how you do that. Now I'm going to jump in and grind the um, other half right now. I'll probably just shut up and uh, just do the same work on the camera and then uh, just put it on triple speed. So. Okay, so this is okay to use again. All right, so on to the grinding. So I'm done trimming this up.
Uh oh. I was in such a rush to get this thing on or puttied in here, I didn't glue the bulkhead on like I did the night last night. So, not the right way of doing this. But I'm kind of committed now, so I gotta, gotta complete this. So, I'm gonna actually do it all in one operation. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. It could, but I definitely would not recommend doing anything this. I can see from the back here that I have uh, the Bondo has been... We could come back in and Sino this up so it takes hold. But it makes for a very unclean mount back here. That's if it even sticks. So, there you go, big boo boo on my thing. So make sure you glue the bulkhead in before you do the Bondo work. I might just cut that, the section out to keep the uh, confusion down. All right, let's see if this one worked. Looks pretty good. Down here and square up this corner. Looks like my mold has a little bit of a acid on it for some reason. Well, it seemed to work out okay. I don't see a big problem. I will go back in there and run a bead of uh, thin Sino to make sure that this piece stays in place. I don't I don't trust the bondo to hold on to it. But I, I, that being said, I'm sure once the bondo is fully hard it should be okay. <sighs> Alright. Obviously I have an air bubble here and an air bubble down here. 
and I'll just go in there with spot putty and do that. This one's nice and firm now. I'm going to square up that edge. I have to square up this edge too. If you notice the um, the the polyester resin or the polyester uh, body filler has a bit of a a latitude and how much hardener you can put in it <laughs> and it'll still kick off just fine. This is kicking off slower but it'll soon be as hard as this one. I was probably a little bit light on that. But again we'll see how this fits. Oh, you can see probably pretty good with this front door right there and where the chair sits next to it. So it's pretty close fit. See how the corner of the chair actually bumps into it? So I could see this needing to be chamfered. And cleaned up. That's if you have the doors. The, you can make this with the doors open. But uh, I prefer mine closed. Because I don't want to super detail the inside of this thing but now when you look in there you get to see the uh, the bulkheads sitting back there because it's totally dark back there you know you really don't see behind them but you see right let's see if we can do this right er, there that's that little edge I was talking about where you'd want to you know put something on there maybe little toolbox or something if you really are going crazy detailing the inside of this but you can't really see it because there's no steering wheel there there's supposed to be a steering wheel on this and that's how you do this part um, okay that's it for now. If you have any questions, just uh, leave them in the comments, and uh, I'll try to answer them. Or you can email me, and that'll be fine, too. I'll answer those there. Thanks for watching. Now, this is my dusty shelf in my office. Gee, what other things do I like? Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> there's the Landmaster literally takes up half my shelf space. That's a standard set of calipers that go with it. Uh, you can kind of see inside. There you go.